What is going on guys, this is Daniel, and yesterday I watched the Clippers Grizzlies game, so I thought, why not do a game breakdown of it, where I'll be showing you some things that stood out to me, so let's get to it. Let's first start off with the Memphis offense, and usually when the ball goes to the high post, the guard who passed it to him on top would cut around him, but here Carter simply clears out, giving Gasol space to attack and score. The Grizzlies ran a double staggered screen and roll where one man pops and one man rolls to the basket and here Conley can attack off of this and draw a foul. Again the double staggered screen and they hit John Luer popping and he's wide open and he hits a 3. Watch how Beno Udrick will pass it into the post then receive a flare screen and this gets him open off of this he can dribble drive and Jordan Farmar commits a mistake by helping one pass away off a good shooter in Courtney Lee and he makes him pay. The Clippers do the same thing, Chris Paul enters the post, receives a flare screen and gets an open 3. Out of the offensive set horns, the Clippers run basic flex motion. Here Crawford can cut to the basket or receive the handoff from Blake Griffin. Here he cuts to the basket and then usually Chris Paul would come and receive the handoff from Griffin. Instead this turns into an isolation which I'm not a fan of and Paul takes a tough fadeaway jumper. Here's a nice set where JJ Redick and Crawford will receive simultaneous pin downs and this gets Crawford an open jumper. And if you follow my channel, you know I'm a longtime advocate of this play. A shooter sets a ball screen, then receives a flare screen, and here Spencer Hawes gets open for a wide open 3. A few weeks ago, we talked about this fantastic play called Horn's Loop, where Reddick will first receive a screen on top to get a good passing angle, while Blake Griffin receives a double screen toward the basket, and here it works perfectly as Blake gets it inside and gets fouled. A tremendous play design and again the Clippers run it to perfection but Griffin can't finish here. This play looks the same but it actually has a slight variation as Griffin will receive one back screen from Redick and after Redick sets the screen he will receive a flex screen to the top. Here the Clippers run it nicely and get Griffin good post position and he can score here. Again the variation as Redick will set the screen for Griffin then receive the flex screen to the top and it works nicely getting Redick a wide open 3. Now moving on to things I saw on defense and watch how the Grizzlies contained 3 screen and rolls on one possession. Here they play ice defense where the on ball defender goes over the screen taking away the jump shot while the big man sags. They contain this and Matt Barnes is a 34% 3 point shooter which is okay but off the dribble that percentage dips so Memphis simply goes under this screen and roll giving Barnes the shot if he wants it, he doesn't take it. Then the Grizzlies play ice again shadowing Paul and they'll gladly give up a long inefficient 2 to Griffin. Because Griffin pops for a jumper, Randolph can double team Paul and leave Griffin gladly giving Griffin a long 2. By popping for jumpers instead of rolling to the basket, Griffin is making it easier on defenses. And this is great ice defense, Lee does not allow Crawford middle and Gasol contains, forcing a tough shot. And we talked about Barnes earlier, Memphis goes under this screen, giving Barnes an off the dribble 3. Now last year Paul was about a 37% 3 point shooter, so it's interesting Memphis also goes under his screen and roll, Paul doesn't shoot it, but here Courtney Lee helps one pass away off Matt Barnes who is a decent catch and shoot shooter. Again the Grizzlies simply go under Paul's screen giving him an open 3, interesting. But you can't do that against a sharp shooter like JJ Redick as Conley goes under his screen and Redick makes him pay. Here the Grizzlies also go under Crawford's on ball screen giving Crawford the space he needs. The hedge and go under philosophy is a great way to defend screen and rolls especially pick and pops and here the hedge gives Conley enough time to get back to Crawford to pressure a miss. The Clippers also use the hedge and go under philosophy quite often and here they contain the screen and roll and eventually force a tough shot. 
How do you beat the hedge under? Simply by having the screener roll hard to the basket. Let's watch how Griffin rolls while Randolph is still hedging and this gets Griffin an easy and close shot. Well, there you have it guys. The Grizzlies have a stout defense, mostly because of their defensive-oriented personnel, but they also imply very solid defensive concepts, and it was a fun matchup against the Clippers' creative offense. Well, thanks for watching, and see you next time.